new day. So I've started to pull the turbo stuff off, just sort of worked out where the position is going to be. This flange is going to have to come down and tilt that way slightly to allow uh, enough for the exhaust to sort of curve around here. It only needs a smidge, but it's still going to have to happen. Um, luckily, I wrapped the manifolds from that end to this end, so I'm just going to move the clamp down and unwrap what I need to. Cut it off, weld it back on, should be all good. Um, the drain and feed adapters that I've got for my eBay GT45 fit straight onto the S400, which is a win. And if I can get it positioned nicely, the hole will still work nicely as well. So I'm just in the process of taking this all off. I've kind of built it so it's hard to get this manifold off. It's easy to do everything else. Like you can see, I've got like a little hook for the, the rest of the, the downpipe. That sort of sits on top. So it's hard now to pull a manifold off from underneath it, but I'm going to have a crack. I need to undo the other V-band in there which connects to the, the under pipe from the other bank. Uh, I think I can get to that, so I'm going to do that. I pulled the water temp sensor out again because I'll smash it otherwise. And I've got to pull spark plugs out because I'll smash them too. I do have a new set, but less smash things is better. So I'm going to keep chipping away at that now. I think, yeah, I'll have the manifold off soon. I can start cleaning it up. Okay, so that was a success. It is possible to get the manifold off without removing the crossover pipe and the dump. I've just let the, the wastegate pipe drop down, wiggled that out of the place, stood all the studs in. Yeah, that worked. Anyone wondering what's leaking? Uh, everything. That V-band leaks. That V-band leaks. It's leaking from this port, which is pretty obvious on the pipe. Okay. Leaking here, it's actually heaps. It's twisted that way. So that's definitely the lowest point. So that's going to be interesting. I'll probably have to get this, I don't know, skimmed somehow. I'll have to find a shop that can do that for me. Just take a little bit off it just to keep it flat. Um, it's leaking here a little bit as well, but not as bad as the other one. Uh, it's, it's leaking here as well, but that's that's not an issue for right now. And you can see there's the crossover. That's where the crossover connects and it's, it's leaking there. So it's leaking everywhere, but it's off. So I can move on to the next bit. Next, I need to pull the gate off. I'm just going to mark the orientation so it stays roughly where I had it. Unwrap this down, and I can start working out where I'm going to do some chopping. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleased it came off without having to get the car up in the air and pull the exhaust off, so it's good. I'll keep on going. Okay, I've moved the clamp down here and pulled off the wastegate and just started to unwrap it. You can see all of the... Uh, Fiberglass needles everywhere. <laughs> I forgot to wear gloves. Ah, dickhead. Um, I'm really itchy now. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm going to stop it for today. As I mentioned, I'm just going to I'm going to chop it sort of here, and I'm going to clean up that flange, and I'll try and bring it down a little bit. The angle's interesting. I'm going to need to keep the angle pretty much the same. But again, the angle of this pipe in relation to the vehicle, if I bring the turbo straight down on this pipe, it's also going to bring it back and down. So it'll actually move the turbo, uh, it'll move the turbo in, down like I want, but also back, which makes that radius to get around the strut tower harder. So I might have to actually pivot the uh, V-band a little, not the V-band, the, um, the flange a little bit to get it in there. But chop first and then work out how to fix it later. It's only a bit of weld. What's the worst that can happen? So yeah, uh, I pulled the studs out as well. Those studs are, they're not good. So yeah. That's that. That's where I leave it. I will resume in the morning. Okay, it's morning. Um, instead of starting to cut into that, I'm going to do some of this small, I suppose, clean jobs first, just because otherwise I'm just going to spray metal everywhere and I'll have to clean it. If I put these these intake manifold gaskets in, I'll I'll pull the intake manifold off, change those, change one behind the throttle body as well, and I'm going to lift up the valley plate, just have a little peek inside there while I've got the intake manifold off, just to have a look. Um, once I've got that all buttoned up, it should be better to move on to the next task so I don't have to come back and re-clean. But yeah, I'll, I'll do that now. I'll get this intake off. Okay, that's off. It's as far as it's going to come. I can't get the bloody hose that I put on the back off and there's not much point cutting it or breaking it trying. So I've just attached the throttle body because same thing, that hose is on there. I don't want to take it off. So I need to change the seal on the back of it anyway. So that one, as you can see, there's other ones here. They're flat as a tack. They're completely flattened down. So... 
it is worthwhile doing this job, and that's the valley plate I want to take off as well. This is an L76 block, so it has the, the oil galleries in the block to feed the displacement on the band. They're all plugged, and it's got an L98 or LS2 top plate over the top. But I'll pull it off and have a have a squeeze anyway to make sure it's all looking good in there. As I mentioned previously, I put this engine together about eight years ago and I didn't do a good job of it, so I just want to double check. Alrighty, so I've just picked out the old seals, pop the new ones in. They only go one way; you really can't get it wrong. But I don't know if you were able to. There's there's two rows of seal on this side and one on the other side, but. This, this little locator here kind of says you can't go wrong. That one obviously only goes in one way as well. It's not it's not symmetrical, so yeah. Um, valley plates off. You can see I've got these these plugs in here. I didn't do this, the previous owner of the block did this, but he's used the engine like this, so it's not a problem. But this this one here was sitting a bit proud. So I don't know if it was allowing full sealing of the of the cover over the top, but again it wouldn't really matter. It might leak oil here. But I doubt it. I've just I've just snugged it down a little bit. It was tight, so it's not like it's worked itself out. It was just sitting a little bit proud, so I've just pulled it in a bit deeper, cleaned up the surface a little bit. That's the plate. So it's an L76 plate because I don't think the LS2 plate actually has the O-rings because it's, it's technically nothing on an LS2 block to seal. But there's that. I'll put it back on now. I've I've seen what I need to see. So that goes back on next. And then the intake manifold will go back over the top. Hopefully those seals don't fall out. I might put a little bit of grease in there so that they don't fall. Put that back on and then that's another job ticked off. Intake manifold back on. None of the seals dropped. So that's dropped back into place nicely. Um, all the bolts are torqued up to 89 inch pounds in sequence. So that's good. I'm about to put the throttle on. I've had a look at it and it's, it's pretty grot. I'm thinking about cleaning it i really don't like cleaning things but i might give that a little little spruce up before i put that on yeah cleans it all up put it back on that was really grot i think this i got all of this intake and heads off one engine that i bought on facebook and i think it had been used for burnouts because it's, it's all, all of this intake was full of like molten rubber so i've, I've scrubbed it out the best i could it, it wasn't like an oily crap that you usually find around there but it was actually Clog pretty much solid with rubber, so it's all it's all working now. That was that was blocked completely, so that's probably why I had some issues with crankcase earlier. But yeah, it's all on now. Uh, move on to the next bit. Okay, it's all talked up. I've dropped the exhaust off because it's getting in the way, and I've also taken some of the studs out and the gasket for the manifold, just because I don't need it. I'm probably gonna have to shave that equivalent amount off the manifold anyway. So realistically, it'll all be even once that's all done. But I don't think I can show with one hand, but that's how much the manifold moves while it's connected at the back. That's the warp in the manifold. So that's the port that leaks for that reason. So, yeah, obviously it needs a bit of work, but that, that's a later problem. Right now this is the problem, so I've got to, I'm going to have to take this off. It's just sitting on there at the moment. Chop that flange off, take a bit of, take a bit of crap out and see how it looks. Alright, ripped the old eBay bandsaw out. This thing's very helpful for me. Um, did a nice wonky cut on that. That's alright. I can clean that up and lop that off. I've cut it back roughly how much further I'm going to have to drop it, so I'm just going to clean that flange up and bang it back on. But yeah, I'm just going to put this in now and do a test line up and see how it looks. Yep, just done a quick test fit. Um, sat the turbo on, just locked it up with some pieces of wood. It was hard to get like, a video of that because I had to hold the turbo. So... It is what it is. I've just marked roughly how much more I'd like to take off. Ignore my shitty welds. Just do Don't worry about it. It's fine. I'm just going to go around and just, just get rid of that. Do another test fit. That should make up for the 10 mil I need to put the flange back in. And it changes the angle of it a little bit. So I think it'll, it'll work better for the exhaust. I'll, I'll clean that up now. All right. I think I've got it in a place where I'm happy with it. It's it's a really tight fit, which is no surprise really. Um, I've compromised a little bit on placement. It's slightly turned from where it was to make it more of a straight shot from the pipe out the back. I've packed this out with about 10 mil of cardboard, so I've got 10 mil of clearance here. But if the pipe comes right off here to a, a four to three inch reducer, that's only going to get further away there. 
I'm also likely going to spin that down on a lathe a little bit just to bring the transition piece back slightly. Got a mate that's willing to do that for me. And then I should have a pretty good sweep for the exhaust to run around or the dump to run around like that, which is much better than up here where it used to hit. Um, I don't really want to cut that because that's obviously structural, quite important to the car. Um, it's brought the turbo back slightly, but and this is tight at the moment, so I can't really show it, but I can turn that and line it up yeah, and line that up better with the hole. So that's not going to be an issue. I've also got the closest point is about here, and that lines up with this dint that's already here from the previous turbo. Uh, I've got about 10 mil from that dint, so if it came to it that that wasn't enough, the mount's are almost solid, so it probably will be, but if it came to that it wasn't enough, I can roll that, just that corner in a little bit more, which would give me heaps of clearance. Yeah, so obviously it's getting quite close to the radiator and everything, but it's not going to be, I mean, this is this is not hot, this is this is fine, there's going to be a beanie over here, you'll be right. So, yeah, that hasn't moved, so that's the same as it has been anyway. Yeah, I think I think that'll work. So I've just got a couple of tax holes in that flange in there now. It'll come up another two mil because I've still got to put a gasket in there. But yeah, minor things, all beneficial things. Coming up another two mil is not going to cause me any problems. I've still got the clearance from the bonnet, and if anything, it's going to give me more off the strut tower. So that's the spot I'm going to try and weld that up. And yeah, that's that's job done. All right, the turbo is in. Bonnet is closed. It is tight, but it doesn't hit. Can't really get my hand in that show. Got about 10 mil. Turbo will still rotate a bit, and it's still got. That's hitting on here, not on the top. So that'll do. I've got the gasket in there just to make sure it's all realistic. This all needs to be machined a little bit, but it's in. Alright, this is going to do me for today. I'm pretty sore from plugging this big turbo in and out. But this is its final position. You can see it's got enough room. I did bang that little bit of steel there a little bit just to give it a bit more. But there's enough room to get the pipe around. It's clearing here. This is okay. I'll put a shield on there if need be. But that's alright. That hasn't moved, but the beanie sits right on top of that. We've got clearance here. I'm still debating whether or not I'll get a V-band and adapt that to a 3-inch pipe, or if I'll just cut it off. Depends what I can source and what looks best and how I feel about it. I might be able to get a filter in here still. I, yeah, something to look at. But that will do for now. I think that's pretty good progress for a day. Right, not much of an update. We're in lockdown in Victoria again, so I can't do what I really need to do to progress anything here. And that's to get the face of these these manifolds finished so they're nice and flat. I can't bolt any of that on until that's done. So I can't really progress with anything there. I've also got some parts on order. I did end up going with a V-band to 3-inch pipe adapter for that. It's like a 4.2-inch V-band. So that's coming. I've got a whatever size that is. I think it's 4-inch to 3-inch transition coming, which will just neck it down slightly. And I can do the rest of that pipe. I've got a mate ready to go to weld that up. But... Again, lockdown, can't do anything, and half the parts aren't here yet anyway, so that's that. I did notice that my catch can is really close to the port that I've got for the IAT. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I, sh I should have put the IAT over here more, but that's there now. And, yeah, it's not really worth cutting and welding it again, so I might just I might just sort of bend that can back a little bit so the wire doesn't rub, but that's that. I put most of the stuff back in just so I didn't lose it just so things didn't get dirty, so most things are in the car. I've also pushed the car down off the hoist, moved it forward a little bit, so I can get in here and keep working on the wiring today. There's a few things I need to do. I needed to put a, a relay on the brake, brake switch, so when my foot's off the brake, it powers the PCM for the lock-up converter. So a 5-pin relay was needed for that, so that's in there now. I need to put some more wiring in, I need to get a, a constant power up to the dash, which I haven't got yet, not not that the, not that that's the cluster, but not that it's there yet, and another one for the gauge pods, which are going to go across there, and I also need to put a, a plug in there for the power for the wideband, so I'll just find a circuit to, to tear that on, it only needs 3 amps, so it shouldn't be too much of a big deal, but I'll, I'll get that done today as well, but the next step is pulling this wiring out and neatening it, neatening it up, so I've also done some cleaning, 
So I've got some room to work, which is good. All right, I'll pull this wiring out now. All right, so this has kept me busy for a while. I've just, I've added in another plug. Ignore this. I mean, if I had my time again, I'd do this completely differently. This is just, it's a shocker now, but hopefully it won't catch fire and kill us all. Um, I've just added in this plug here, which has the five wires. It's got one hole still. It has five wires, three from the flex fuel sensor, which is under the floor of the car, and two from the diff speed sensor, which I'm going to adapt to the Volvo cluster. That connects up here. This is the section that runs down the center trunk of the car. So you've got, uh, that's your power mirrors, and the, the brown one is the handbrake. We've got the section here, which is the lighting circuit for the seat belt. This one here runs to the rear of the car, which is all of your reverse lights, tail lights, uh, brake lights, um, fuel pump control, and boot releases in there. And then we run back through to the main trunk here, which connects back to the fuse panel. So I've still got to wire in a couple of power and grounds. That's power and ground for the flex fuel sensor. It's internally regulated, so I just need to give it 12 volts from a, a, a triggered source. So I'll probably connect that up to the same one that runs the PCM. It makes sense that it, it's connected because that's where it ultimately is wiring to anyway. And I've also added this plug over here, which is going to run all of my gauges and, and the cluster. I've still got a this is for the taco, and these other two are for the speeder, which connect back over to, to this plug over here. So I've still got to terminate those. I made this little fan outlet as well, which is a, a six pin DT to three, four, three, three pin DTMs. And these run uh, either the wide band or the gauge clusters. So uh, the, the, the gauge is in the cluster. So that should work well. And that will allow me to pull any one of them out individually if I need to, to fix something. So, or change them out for another, another modules. That's what's, Kept me busy for today. Um, I'm just going to run these last two wires in and then put it back in the car. I think that should probably be it for things that matter. I should be able to drive it after that. I mean, there's a couple of wires still left over, but these are things for like um, fuel pressure sensor, which I can't wire into anything yet anyway. So I'm just going to I'm just going to wrap those up and leave them off to the side for future future problems. Um, once I've got that done, we've just heard word in Victoria that we're coming out of lockdown as of midnight tonight. So I should be able to get the manifolds linished if the shop's got some time available so I'll start taking them out next so I can get them ready to take to the shop tomorrow. Alright back from the machine shop I've had this uh, surfaced. The The shop actually used a, a head surfacing machine to do that which was very lucky so it's come out perfectly so I'm just going to tidy that up. I've still got to do I'm going to just clean this one up with a knife lock and same with the T4 flames on the bottom just tidy them a bit. That one seals okay so that one doesn't need to be touched. And I've got the old gapping station set up here, so I'm just going to gap these down to 30 thou. I think that's typically pretty good for a, a turbo spark bug, so I'll do that now and I can clean some stuff up. Okay, just gapped all of those plugs and popped them in. I've still got to just torque them up a little bit. I put a bit of this uh, this anti-seize on there to make it a bit easier for next time when I try and take them out. That's how I Loctited them in. I love when people say that. Loctite, like assuming that Loctite only make adhesive. No, they don't. They make anti-seize and a lot of other stuff as well, but it's just funny. It's like when people refer to LS blocks as either aluminium blocks or cast blocks. Like, there's a difference. Like, casting is the manufacturing process, not the material. The aluminium blocks are cast too, so it's pretty redundant in saying that. If you're going to say it, you're going to say aluminium or iron, not aluminium or cast. Same goes for people talking about their Commodore transmissions where they go, has it got an auto in it or a six-speed? When it's a VE Commodore and it's a six-speed auto as well. Pretty redundant, doesn't really help anybody, but yeah, anyway, little rant, don't worry about that. So I'll talk these up and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, just getting back into this. I've just coloured in the surface with a Sharpie just to see where the high spots and the low spots are and started hitting it with a file. I'm just going to hit it with a box file for now and then I'll go over it with the, uh, the sharpening stone just to get a level. But you can see already, like, I've put a lot of work into this section here, which is the highest part, and there's a little bit over here as well. But there's heaps here that's not even touching yet. So it's going to need a little bit more before I hit it with the stone. Otherwise, I'll be at it for three weeks. But, yeah, I'll keep filing away at this. All right, a little bit further along. This is not a job for fat bricks like me, I tell you what. Um, most of this is okay here. Still got a bit to do here, and a little bit over here. But it's getting there. It's also, probably not surprisingly, really fucking sharp now. So I've cut myself a few times and I'm thinking about getting gloves. I probably won't get gloves, but I'm thinking about it. 
Okay, that's done. I didn't get gloves, but it's done. I've just hit that with the stone lightly. That's really flat now. It's perfect wherever I need it. Um, there is still some low spots. Obviously, we've got a, a groove here. Doesn't matter. Groove over here. Doesn't matter. And a little bit on the outside of the bolt. They don't matter because I'll just grab a, a gasket. You can see, you can see the gasket. It seals on the inside of the bolt. So as long as that part's smooth, it's all good. The outside's probably not going to get touched anyway. So that gasket's obviously no good, but it shows where where it matters. So I'm going to flip it over now and clean up the surface of this V-band because that one's a bit wonky too. I won't be able to get that perfect, but I'll do the best I can with it. Okay, done. I've just re-wrapped this. It's not a very good job, but it's better than no job at all. A couple of clamps just to hold the, uh, the wrap in place. And it's all... I've done all the edges as well with the file just so I'd minimise cutting myself putting it in. I'm going to put it in now and see how it fits. A little bit more progress to show. I've got the turbo, or well, most of the turbo back in. Wastegate's back on. The screamer pipe actually goes on a different angle now. I'm guessing because the manifold's just moved a little bit in. And it hits a brake line down the bottom unless I twist everything around a little bit. But it seems to be good where it is. I've taken the turbo apart and put it in in sections so I can get to the bolts. Like the nuts in here, there's no way I'm getting into those nuts unless this was off. So I've put the turbine housing on first, then put the compressor housing in. Had to take the, sorry, not the, the CHRA in. I had to take the compressor housing off because it doesn't physically fit in unless I take it into, into three sections, which is okay because I needed to do that to get to the oil feed underneath anyway. Oil drain, sorry, which is in there now. I've done the, the nut up, but I'm not 100% satisfied with it. So I'm going to check that again later. But before I do that, the crossover pipe, which is in there, which runs underneath the, the balancer across to the other bank over there, it sort of runs underneath there. I need to resurface those flanges and pop that in. But some of the issues I'm going to face with that is that it's, um, I need to take the radiator out to do it. So <laughs> yeah, I'll take all of that out now so I can get into it and start doing that pipe. Okay, radiator is out. Um, for those who are asking about the intercooler, no light. Intercoolers down the bottom, transcoolers up the top. Can't really see it, but it's all in there. So it goes in flush where the, the AC used to be. Plenty of room. Um, I forgot I need to take this manifold off anyway, because I want to put a new gasket in there. I've got one on the bench over here, ready to go. So um, I've got to take it off anyway, so I've got to keep digging away. I've just pulled the, the spark plug leads off. Next is the dipstick, and then I'll unbolt this manifold, pull it out. I might give it a a quick block just with the um with the sharpening stone just to see if it needs it the v-bands definitely need it they're warped like a banana so i, I don't know how i'm going to get those straight i might have to try them all up with uh copper goo it's not rated for the temperature though so it's going to be it's going to be hopes and dreams but i might give it a whirl all right that's what's next all right that's where i'm leaving it tonight that manifold is out the crossover pipe is out i've just hit that with the with the knife block and I'm pretty happy with that surface however this surface is also warped I thought this manifold was actually pretty good but it doesn't look like it is so I'm going to take that back tomorrow and see if they'll do this one for me as well and then we'll put it back in the car all right that's probably going to do it for this video I might post one up tonight and yeah give you something to watch and then I'll start a new video tomorrow thanks guys like and subscribe